Greetings, royal family. It seems that some, a little bit of headway has been made with the Shahs on this episode. A, a, little, a little bit. You know, we still got a ways to go. Um, and it seems like they might be on their way to a resolution with this whole MJ and Reza thing. But it's too soon to tell. But we might be on the road to a solution. Thanks for clicking on the video, royal family. This is Shahs of Sunset. Season 8, Episode 9. All right, so here we go. Let's just get straight into it. So we see Reza. I like to call him the drama king. Reza, Reza loves to throw his temper tantrum, does, doesn't he? And he acts all self-righteous, but eventually when he's pressed and when people aren't falling for his shenanigans, he will admit to his wrongdoings. I have to say that. I like Reza. He gets on my last nerve. But he is willing to admit when he's wrong, you know. But he has to throw a temper tantrum first and see how far he can get away with throwing these temper tantrums. In the beginning of the episode, he did act like a child. Um, he and Adam were driving in the car, and Reza gets a call from Nima. Oh, you know, Nima's another one. He's so annoying. So he says to Reza, hey, you know, I'm just checking in on ya. And, you know, he wants... MJ and Reza to reconcile. He wants them to resolve things. Nima made, let me tell you where Nima messed up. <laughs> In Reza's eyes. Nima made the mistake of telling Reza, hey, you know, Reza, I, I, I talked to MJ, you know, me and Mike talked to MJ and I kind of see where she's coming from. Reza immediately, immediately gets pissed. And he tells, <laughs> he tells Nima that he and Mike are up MJ's blank. Everyone is not taking Reza's side. See, that's the problem. That's what Reza wants. He wants everyone to take his side. And it's pretty much not working, so he's getting pissed. He told Nima to stay the F out of his business. And he hung up on him. <laughs> Mid-sentence, while Nima was getting his words out. Now, Nima, he does feel hurt. He expresses to Shervin in the next scene that he feels uh, that Reza is really hurt. That's why he's acting out and he's acting like he's tough. And Nima's just, just trying, laying it on thick, just trying to make it seem like, oh my gosh, you know, this is really stressing him out. First of all, Nima, knock it off. If there's anyone that should be mediating this issue between MJ and Reza, it should be Mike. I get it. Nima needs camera time. Mike got other things going on and he, he ain't got time. He's been through enough with Reza alone and MJ alone which he brought up and he said he chose to forgive them. But anyway, but Nima, I get it. Nima's just trying to get some camera time, but it's really annoying. Anyway, speaking of Mike, Mike shows up at his parents' house, you know, to check on mom and pop. And he starts talking to them, you know, they're catching up and he starts talking about Paulina, who is his girlfriend, his current girlfriend. He asked his parents, <laughs> he asked his parents what they think about um, Paulina. Crickets, you know, his mother who's very nice. His mother's trying to muster up the, the words, I guess, come up with the words. He's like, you know, she's a very lovely girl. His father ain't say nothing. He, they probably did, but it, they edited the scene to make him look like his parents didn't say a word. So his mom just wants him to take it slow. You know, is this, it's, it's pretty much almost like they heard this all before, you know, this I'm in love speech before from Mike and, you know, she's very nice girl and we heard this before, and so have his parents. So hopefully Mike will take his time with Paulina um, and won't rush into anything. His mother quickly changes the subject. She brings up the business. Now she feels that he, she still feels that he's in over his head with the rental property uh, project. But Mike, being Mike, he's determined to prove everyone wrong. His father, his mother, and, and Reza. <sighs> oh, Mike. He's just, he's, he's not letting this go. He's, he's the project manager. He's going to renovate this building and he is going to turn a sick profit. That's his plan. And he's sticking to it. Moving along to MJ and Tommy. So they're in a therapist's office and Tommy pretty much addresses how he felt when MJ was going through her traumatic childbirth. You know, MJ had a full hysterectomy. She had a difficult pregnancy, uh, difficult childbirth. So Tommy was traumatized by that pretty much, you know, and he's letting his feelings out to the therapist and 
All of this, he says, reminded him of when he lost his mom at a young age. And he said that he grew up being an angry kid, um, got himself into a lot of trouble because he lost his mom. So he's still kind of dealing with that, I guess. Plus MJ situation, you know, bringing it all back to him. Death, you know, he was very, very scared that he was going to lose uh, MJ. And he's also dealing with this issue with Reza pressing charges on him. So MJ and Tommy, they basically want to make sure that they're, that they communicate effectively. MJ is talking in her confessional and she says that she, they, she wants to learn how to communicate, um, with Tommy. She, she's, she just doesn't want her marriage to fall apart. You know, Tommy loves him some MJ and vice versa. You know, he loves that MJ and she loves him too. You know, you can see it in the body language. She's very consoling and comforting to him. She did say that they communicate differently, but they're working towards just understanding each other better. So they're doing the work. And she also made mention that if two people communicate differently and they don't have the tools to learn to communicate, you basically are just going to ruin the marriage. And I like that she said tools, you know, that's real Iyanla esque of her. So I just think it's smart that they are going to therapy. They did go to therapy prior to them getting married. So it shows that they're both trying, you know, I, I, I personally think that Reza envies the fact that Tommy is madly in love with MJ and MJ is madly in love with Tommy. I think that, she, I think Reza envies that. I really, really do. Anyway, Reza is speaking of Reza. Reza is car shopping. And do y'all notice that Reza and Adam are spending a lot more time together? We see Adam tagging along with Reza in just about every scene in these last couple of episodes. So he's going car shopping and then he brings up the fact that he always goes car shopping with Mike and then they flash back to when they both went car shopping. But he's mad at Mike um, because Mike went to MJ's mother's retirement party last week. You see what I'm saying about, about Reza just <laughs> Reza and his temper tantrums. How are you mad at Mike for going to Vita's retirement party? Mike grew up with MJ just like Reza grew up with MJ. Vita is like a mother figure to Mike too. So what is he not supposed to go because you're mad at MJ? That's childish. So <laughs> Mike said that Reza blocked him and Nima and Shervin off of Instagram. <laughs> Mike said that whenever Reza gets mad and you don't take his side, he's like a little kid and he takes up his toys <laughs> and leaves the sandbox. <laughs> oh God, I thought that was so funny because it's so true. Reza, Reza is just childish. And again, whenever he doesn't get his way, he's just ready to cut you off. So we see Mike uh, at this rental property. Well, uh, Reza was car shopping for his mother. And as usual, he's talking down to Adam. Nothing new there. Anyway, so we shift scenes and we see Mike at the rental property. So Mike is assessing the place that he is. Um, he's assessing the property. And he's also reminiscing about Reza because he Reza is usually the one that helps Mike with all things real estate. Uh, Mike also said that Reza threw it in his face. The fact that he helped him build his house because Reza helped build Mike's house. And, you know, Reza likes to throw. I'm telling you. Reza does something for you and he will always, always throw it in your face. That's the first thing that he does. Well, I did this for you. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have this anyway. So Mike, um, and his, his parents, basically in a nutshell, he's having the property appraised. So Mike and his parents are hoping that the value of the property as is, is at least under $3 million. Right. Um, because if it's more than $3 million, they feel that you might as well just sell it and keep it moving. Uh, but the appraiser says that it's valued at 2.5, what did I say? 3,000, 3 million. They're hoping that it's not over 3 million anyway, but it's appraised as is at 2.5 million. So as Mike said, it's not worth selling. So after he renovates it, it will pretty much be worth 10 to $11 million. So he's happy. He says he can't wait to tell his parents this so they can get off of his back. So that's a good sign. The assessor, I think the, um, the appraiser <laughs> asked Mike, who's going to be handling all this? Who's the project manager? And Mike said, I am. The guy paused and says, you're doing this all by yourself? He says, yeah. Mike said, look, whatever it is that I don't know, I'll fake it till I make it. I'll wing it. 
I think Mike is going to pull it off. And here's why. There's a lot of money on the line. And he does not have any distractions right now. There's a lot of money on the line. And come hell or high water, I think this is going to be it. I hope so. I hope so. We move on to see Gigi, honey. Gonessa is in the people them hospital. So she had her fallopian tubes removed. When she woke up, her mom and her dad were right by her side. Her, ecto her ectopic pregnancy did not dissolve. So when she had a miscarriage, um, basically the fertilized egg was planted in her fallopian tube. She received a shot that was supposed to dissolve this ectopic pregnancy. It didn't. So she had to have, she had cramping and pain and she had to have emergency surgery. So she had her fallopian tubes removed. Now she can still get pregnant, just not the natural way. And she kept saying in her scene, in her confessional, that she got pregnant too many times accident, accidentally. And this is her karma. Translation, she terminated a lot of pregnancies and now she's having complications conceiving. I mean, I guess she tried to make it cute, whatever. We know what you mean, Gigi. I mean, ain't no judgment here, you know, but I know she feels bad though. She just kept saying that this is, this is her karma. All those times that she got pregnant accidentally and now she can't even get pregnant on purpose. So we move on to see a, a meeting at Gigi. So Gigi let the shots know via text. She sent out a group text about her complications and Mike and Shervin, they are riding in the car and she wants to meet up with everybody at her house, right? Except for MJ, of course. Um, Mike and Shervin, they're riding in the car and they're trying to figure out what <laughs> these two idiots, they're trying to figure out like what fallopian tubes are and simple biology, right? Bless their hearts. So they're trying to figure it all out. Anyway, Nima, Destiny, Mike, Shervin, Sarah, for whatever reason, I don't even know why she's around. Go away. Anyway, they all meet up, um, at Gigi's house. She's recovering from her surgery. So she basically breaks it down and explains to them everything that has happened to her and what she's been going through and things that she's been keeping from them. Um, and of course, some of them are start, started to cry and, you know, it's very emotional. Now here's the thing. The first thing that I thought of is this is interesting because when MJ had a complete hysterectomy, meaning she could never have children ever, ever, ever again, None of the Shahs showed her any love and attention. They didn't even visit her. Hmm. Anyway, so Gigi, she says that everyone needs to get along, especially because of what she recently went through. Now, I never thought that I would see the day that Gigi Goldnessa is the peacemaker. Anyway, then the MJ and Reza situation is brought up. The beef is uh, brought, up, brought up and Reza, he starts with his mellow, drama okay he starts crying and he starts saying i was going through some you know let me not make fun of him because that's the way he, he talks when he cries he was just saying that he was going through a lot right now and he says that he felt isolated mind you he pushed everybody away blocked everybody but he felt isolated if you felt isolated that was your own fault Mike was pretty much holding him accountable and I loved every minute of it. Reza, see, he wants every, he wants everyone to mind their business, right? And says that he's going through a lot and he feels isolated, like I said, and he and Adam were talking about getting divorced. Let's just pause. You and Adam were talking about getting divorced on the last season, during taping of the last season a couple of years ago. Okay. Because you Reza were out flirting and fraternizing. So see what MJ said, when MJ said, go cheat on your husband, have your husband cheat on you, continue to cheat on each other, go to bathhouses and leave me out of this. That struck a nerve because it's the truth. The same way you like outing her business, she pulled a you on you. Anyway, Mike is not buying it. And, and, and I'm with Mike a hundred percent. Neither am I. I'm not buying the, the, the antics and the theatrics and the crying. So he wants everybody to mind their business, right? But Reza is always in somebody else's business. Reza was all in Mike's business when he was married to Jessica. And when Reza was chewing Mike out, Mike listened to him. And now Mike is calling him out and Reza doesn't want to hear it. He wants to get up and wants to walk off. I just think that Reza knows that he's wrong and Mike is not pacifying him. And he feel, and Reza feels bad. Reza knows he's wrong. He has a conscience. He knows he's wrong and he's not getting the support or the backing or everyone cheering him on like he hoped 
and he's being called out on it. And I think he's embarrassed. So Reza starts crying and he apologized for making, he apologized to, to the Shahs for making them all choose sides. Um, and he said that he owes, he says that he owes MJ an apology. And he admitted that he went too far in reference to uh, the things that he said to, to MJ. As he should, he does owe her an apology. He owes her an apology for leaking those text messages between him and Tommy. Now, remember, Tommy thought that he was going to lose MJ. He confided in Reza when he was scared out of his mind. And you go and post that on IG. You talk about MJ's health condition and what she went through for the pup. Like, you just put it out to the public and thought that that was funny. And you mad because Tommy showed up in your backyard and tossed around some plants and pots? I just, I think that if Mike and a couple of the other shots would have had his back, would have had Reza's back and took his side, I don't think that he would be so quick to apologize. But he realized that Adam is the one out here embarrassing himself and Reza. This is all Adam's fault. And Reza knows that. But he's trying to pin the blame. First it was first it was Ali. Then it went from being Ali to MJ. Then it went from MJ to being Destiny. Then it went back to being MJ. No, nobody's buying your foolishness, sir. Adam embarrassed you. You embarrassed yourself. Y'all both be cheating on each other, and that information is now out. And I did notice that Adam was not at this gathering. Uh -huh. But Mike, Big Cousin Mike did a good job calling Reza out on his BS. And Reza owned up to his mess, and he realized that he was stupid. He said that. He said he overreacted. He said that he feels horrible. He's sorry to, to them for making them feel like they had to choose sides. He said he was going through a lot. Uh, again, he felt isolated, but he was the one that blocked everybody. So I don't think anybody was buying that. Mike was like, no, I, I cannot. I cannot. Like when Reza first started crying, he's like, what do you want me to do? You want me to, 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 to hold you, to cuddle you? <laughs> Mike held strong. That's why I've been saying from the very beginning, at first, Mike wasn't saying anything when all of this was going down. Mike kept quiet, but I said, Mike needs to intervene. And he did, because if the roles were reversed, Reza would have been all up in everybody's ear, chewing everybody out, acting like he's the judge and jury. And I'm glad Mike did it. Meanwhile, uh, back at MJ and Tommy's, they're meeting up. <laughs> Do y'all notice <laughs> that Tommy calls just about everybody abroad? And I know he does not mean it in a bad way. I know he doesn't. It's a New York thing. Like, I know he doesn't mean it in a bad way, but it's so funny. But the he, they meet up with a lawyer who is also Tommy's friend from uh, from back home. <laughs> he said, this broad is going to be here any minute now. But that's his, that's his homie, so I, whatever. Anyway, so she is she arrives at the house the lawyer friend the attorney friend and she's letting him know straight up you know what the worst case scenario will be as far as the civil and criminal case that reza has against tommy now listen yes tommy did go to reza's house and he tossed around some plants but reza did that to get back at mj and to also kind of take the heat off of him because I wonder if Ali would have pressed charges on Reza, how would Reza feel? Reza would have tried to justify that. Remember he met up with Ali, he roughed him up and he threw a drink in his face. If Ali would have pressed charges, Reza would have tried to justify his behavior. Again, I still feel that Reza is envious of MJ's happy marriage. So the lawyer friend and uh, Tommy and MJ, they're talking. MJ's asking the right questions. MJ is pissed at the thought that Tommy could be hit with a felony charge and possibly do time in the county jail. So MJ said in her confessional, this is the nine inch nail in the coffin of her friendship with Reza and their relationship as like, you know, brother and sister. I've heard that before, so we don't know. So will Reza drop the charges as well as the restraining order?
because the attorney said uh, the restraining order, him dropping the restraining order, or the restraining order being dropped is totally in Reza's hands. So will he drop the charges and the restraining order? We shall see next week when Reza and MJ sit down to talk. Oh, yes, they are going to sit down and talk, and I can't wait. Now, here's what I think MJ should do. Which she might not, but she might. We'll, she's very unpredictable. That's one of the things I like about MJ. Certain things, she's unpredictable. MJ, it would be in her best interest if she plays nice, even though I know that she would want to rip Reza a new one. But I do hope that she plays nice, and maybe, just maybe, Reza might drop that restraining order. So we shall see next week when Reza and MJ sit down. So, royal family, you already know what to do. Get down in the comments. Let me know what you think about this episode. Be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't done so already, subscribe. We'd love to have you join the royal family. Check out the other content on the channel. There's plenty to choose from. So, I look forward to reading your comments, royal family. Until next time, peace.